This Kawasaki ZR 1400 is a 1.4 liter sport bike. That is quite a lot of displacement for this type of motorcycle, especially when you consider that most of them are 1000s or 600s, maybe even 300 cc. So what is the point in having all of this extra displacement? And is it just one massive gimmick at the end of the day? Well, let's jump on and let's find out. Yes, everyone, the venerable, the awesome ZR 1400. All right. So yeah, this is a motorcycle that I've been riding for nearly four years now, I think, actually. Maybe it's over four years, I can't remember. I can't remember exactly when I bought her. But I've had loads and loads of fun on this motorcycle, as the vast majority of you probably already know. I know that camera's a little bit precarious there, but we'll see if, if it works all right. Hopefully we can get some pretty neat action shots today. So yeah, is that extra CC worth it? Of course, there are manufacturers that are looking to go a similar route with motorcycles such as the Super Duke, uh, that's from KTM. Which way should we go? Well, let's go this way. That's an interesting car. <laughs> that was a quad bike. <laughs> I didn't, didn't quite recognize it with that giant container on the front of it. But yeah, there are motorcycles out there that kind of fit this sport bike description that are huge numbers in terms of CC. But most of them, well, I was gonna say, most of the bikes that are in this category aren't really sport bikes. Like KTM Super Duke, I mean, that's kind of like a super naked. Of course, you've got Ducati with a few motorcycles of theirs that are quite big in terms of displacement, but really they're competing with the Japanese 1000s. So bikes like the ZSR 1400 here and the likes of the Hayabusa are kind of all in their own class. And I think you could probably put in there the Honda Blackbird as well from back in the day. So it's kind of like, well, what's the point? Kawasaki are no longer selling the ZR 1400 in Europe anymore. They are still selling them in the United States, but there's gotten to a point now where these 1000s are overtaking these kinds of motorcycles in terms of raw horsepower. So what is the point in them these days? Well, the one thing that a 1000cc can't give you that this motorcycle can is all of that torque. And so, yeah, okay, a ZX-10R might be producing more top-end horsepower than this bike is. It might have a faster nought to 60. I mean, maybe not, actually. This thing, I think, is an all 60 of two and a half seconds, 2.6 seconds, something like that, which is pretty crazy. At least, oh, that's on the spec sheet, anyway. So it is still one of the fastest bikes in the world in terms of nought to 60 and quarter mile, but there's a lot of bikes out there now that have got 210 horsepower plus and they're yeah they're smaller than this much smaller than this these are 998 cc motorcycles that are producing these kinds of power numbers and especially because these bikes are lighter significantly lighter than this bike this is what a 260 kilogram motorcycle wet that is super heavy and the Hayabusa is a similar kind of weight as well and that's probably one of the things that lets it down really when you, when you compare it to modern day 1000cc class motorcycles and so I do think there is a little bit of this uh, oh it's a 1.4 litre sport bike so it's, it's a bit of a bragging right I suppose when you have a bike like this that has so much displacement I suppose there is a bit of a marketing gimmick kind of element there to this bike the fact that it is one of the biggest cc sport bikes you can buy if not the biggest cc sport bike you can buy well yeah it's going to be a pretty mean machine and that is certainly the case with the likes of the zr 1400 or zx14 but no it really isn't any quicker really especially when you're talking about track day use uh, one of these 1000s is going to be significantly faster if you're a skilled rider I'm not a track day rider, but if you're a skilled track day rider, you probably, you'll probably much prefer something like a ZX-10R or an R1 or an S1000RR, something like that. You'll definitely prefer one of those because they're significantly lighter and they're easier to throw around the corners. Not to say that this bike couldn't do track days. I've seen certain reviews of this motorcycle where 
they have taken on track and been pleasantly surprised at how well this bike performs on track. So you can't knock it for that either. But this isn't a track motorcycle, all right? This is this is a drag strip motorcycle. This is one of those things where it's all about just how quickly you can get from 0 to 60, how quickly you can mile munch <laughs> from, a, from a standing start. And that's where this motorcycle really shines. And it's all because of that torque. 160 newton meters of torque. That is just insane. What's that in foot pounds? What, like, I don't know, 130, 140 foot pounds of torque, something like that. Just a ridiculous amount of torque. But the fact that this motorcycle has got that horsepower to back it up as well, 210 horsepower at the crank, combined with that 160 newton meters of torque, you, you're getting the best of both worlds. So you are getting a lovely amount of torque right at the bottom end, a lovely amount of torque going all the way through the range. And then of course, you start getting into that power band right at the top end where you get all of that juicy horsepower. So you get a lot of people saying there is no replacement for displacement. And I think that is true in a lot of ways. But when it comes to motorcycle engines, of course, the bigger they get, the less they can rotate. I mean, this red line's at 11,000 RPM, so they could probably go to 11,500 RPM or so, topping out. But the bigger the motorcycle gets, the less RPM it's able to produce. So, and that's, that's the trick with a lot of these motorcycles, especially these sport bikes, when it comes to their top end horsepower, the reason why they're able to produce such crazy horsepower numbers is because their RPM is through the roof, you know, 14, 15,000 RPM, especially when it comes to 600s. These bikes are revving out at a ridiculously high RPM and the Ninja 400, no, excuse me, the ZX4R, the Ninja ZX4R, it's a small bore in line four. So it's four teeny tiny cylinders and they all add up to 400 cc or so. And they redline, gosh, what, 16,000 RPM, something like that crazy but that's how it produces all of its power but these bikes don't produce that much torque well the 600s don't and bikes like the zx4r don't either but the 1000s they still produce a lovely amount of torque a lot of them are well over 100 newton meters of torque which is significant that is a lovely amount of torque especially for street riding but it's got nothing on this bike and i think that's where the likes of the supercharged H2 bikes from Kawasaki are kind of filling in the gap here for the ZR 1400 where they are producing similar amounts of torque to this bike but even then like they say there's no replacement for displacement they're still not able to produce the same amount of torque as this bike does so it does have a purpose I think personally I mean a lot of you will probably think well there's kind of no point you know you might as well get a 1000 it's easier to ride because there's less weight to carry so moving it around especially doing these kinds of speeds is going to be for this bike to be more difficult than something like a 1000 or something like that and you know i can't really argue with that but from my experience of riding this bike every day for the past four years i've loved it man i have not felt myself wanting to go back to a small displacement sport bike when we started off this channel, we had this bike and my Honda CBR 600RR, which did scratch that itch quite nicely, to be honest with you, for a street-oriented sport motorcycle. Well, you can't really go wrong with a 600. Even though they don't produce a load of torque, you're still getting a load of that horsepower, and they're really nimble, lightweight. It's just, they're so easy to throw around corners, getting around places really straightforward motorcycles to ride in a lot of ways at least compared to this but i never got on this and thought oh i prefer to go on my cbr 600 rr you know maybe i'd feel differently about a 1000 but right now we've got the zx 9r as well and i don't whenever i'm riding this i don't feel like oh i prefer to be riding my zx 9r right now even though both these bikes feel very similar there's something about the torque, there's something about the power of this motorcycle that makes it a unique experience in a lot of ways. And so, yeah, I, I really do think that, for the most part anyway, the extra CC, yeah, is, is a great thing to brag about, but it does actually serve a purpose. 
in producing that torque. Yeah, you got that load of horsepower, but producing that torque. That's why, even though the third generation Hayabusa is producing only like 170 odd horsepower at the crank, I say only, that's still a lot. But that's actually less horsepower than the previous generation Hayabusa, and it's all because of those like emission standards and things like that that Suzuki has had to try and overcome to try and sell the Hayabusa here in Europe but it still produces a crazy amount of torque. And so that's why when you're riding bikes like this or the third generation Hayabusa, even though this produces a lot more horsepower than the current generation Hayabusa does, they're still gonna feel very similar to ride because of all that torque. And I know that a lot of people, they like to, they like to kind of class this bike as a Tora, Sport Tora. You know, you know I never have done, but it is significantly sportier than a Sport Tora in a lot of ways. You are leaning forward over those handlebars. You, you, there is a lot of weight on your wrists. And the foot pegs are quite high up. Seriously, for a Sport Tora, this is more of a sport bike than a Sport Tora, in my humble opinion, as most of you know. And any of you living in the United States, well, this is the X14. So yes, it is a sport bike through and through. This is kind of the biggest sport bike that you can get <laughs> at the moment in the United States. But here in Europe, it's more classed as a sport tourer, which I do kind of understand from a practicality point of view. But that's the thing, tourers for the most part, yeah, they focus more on torque than horsepower, which is pretty much, well, interesting, that's where the Hayabusa has kind of gone into that more cruiser kind of territory, less horsepower, more torque, but they've still tried to keep that horsepower as high as possible, considering, but no, seriously, from my experiences riding this motorcycle, it's not been one of those things where, yeah, where I felt like it's too much. Now, I know that a lot, a lot of that comes down to your wrist control, but I don't really feel like going ridiculously fast on this motorcycle all the time as a lot of people seem to get put off by. They don't want to lose their license. Believe it or not, I've never got a speeding ticket on this motorcycle. See, now I say that, now I'm going to get one, aren't I? <laughs> but that's because most of the time I am just cruising. Even though this is one of those motorcycles that really wants you to give it the beans, you really don't have to. And so from that point of view, yeah, from, from a touring bike perspective, cruising it is great. You still have a load of torque down low, which you can use if you need to in a pinch. But for the most part, yeah, you can absolutely cruise this motorcycle, although I would recommend some mods to make it a little bit less sporty and more tourable, more touring oriented. But that is entirely possible. You can get handlebar risers. You can get ones that just literally go on, go on the handlebars, and you don't have to do any adjustments to the cables or anything like that. The cables have got plenty of slack in them to raise the handlebars by an inch. Of course, you can you can get foot pegs that are lower as well, or adjustable foot pegs for this bike. So honestly, the options are are fairly uh, varied in terms of customizing this kind of riding experience for your personal needs. It's like, yeah, okay, you want to be able to tour this motorcycle, but you don't want to sacrifice all of that torque and all that horsepower, having to, you know, having to buy a motorcycle that is more of a sport tourer. And unfortunately, that is the case a lot of ways. Sport tourers, most of them are, more, are, are, are a bit more boring than this. They don't quite have that, have that awe, you know? that awe-inspiring kind of performance. So I get it. I totally get it why people would want to use this motorcycle as a tourer, given the chance, because they want those bragging rights. They want that horsepower. They want to be able to talk about that torque and that displacement, and why not? Uh, maybe coming into Cheltenham today was a bad idea. <laughs> Riding on a Saturday on a bank holiday weekend. Probably not the best idea. Not really the best place to show off what this bike is capable of, is it? But then again, that's never what this what this video was uh, ever meant to be about. 
Do you know what I mean? It's, it's just a really smooth riding experience in so many ways. But, I mean, we're kind of talking more about the versatility of this bike now rather than kind of the whole point of, of that displacement. But it all kind of ties into the package that this motorcycle has. It's a really neat little package, this bike. The fact you can ride it in and around town pretty easily is, uh, is commendable for a bike like this. You'd think, oh, this, this isn't really all that suitable for city riding and things like that. I've used this bike getting in and out of towns and cities. I've used this bike a lot and honestly it's never let me down in that regard. So just something else to add to this motorcycle's quiver. But seriously guys, I, don't, don't be afraid to look at something like this. If you're looking at something like a 1000 or what have you, look at something like this as well, especially on the used market. Well I say especially, the used market is the only option you have, at least with the lives of the ZZR here, but with the Hayabusa, you can still buy one of those new if you wanted to. But seriously, don't overlook these bikes. They honestly provide you with quite a lovely experience that, honestly, 1,000cc sport bikes can't really match in a lot of ways, simply because they don't have that torque. Again, it all goes back to the torque. And it's amazing. Seriously, it's so smooth. And it's not like all or nothing either. It's a really lovely linear power delivery. If anything, as I've kind of mentioned before, I would prefer this bike to have a little bit more torque down in the lower end. So less top speed and maybe more torque. Maybe we can change the gearing or maybe I can get the ECU flashed or something like that. But so if, if, I'm, if I'm saying to you that this bike could use more torque down low, <laughs> then it's quite a... Uh, is quite a, a gentle experience in a lot of ways at least if you are cruising and if you it's like for, for example if i'm here and i just crank on that throttle it, it's not it's not going to be pulling wheelies like the zh2 would you've got to be in the, in the higher end of the rev range before you got to you got to start hitting that top end horsepower before you start pulling wheelies on this bike in a lot of ways so again just awesome absolutely wicked Anyway, everyone, I mean, we're just about to head out of Cheltenham now. I'm going to go and shoot another video on this awesome motorcycle, but let me know what you think down in the comment section below. I know that a lot of you lot who have subscribed to this channel are fans of this bike and you love watching content around this motorcycle. Well, let me know down in the comment section below if you think that this bike, if there's any point in all the extra displacement. I'm curious. Because there's a reason why a lot of people buy these bikes. Unfortunately, they're not quite as popular as the ZX-10R from Kawasaki, but they should be. They absolutely deserve to be. This is not a, a dad bike. <laughs> not like a VFR 800 or something like that. Seriously, it's, this has got far more going for it than something like that. Even though the VFR is a fantastic bike in its own right, to be fair. But no, it's not a boring dad bike. Uh, I don't want you guys to get that impression of this motorcycle. This is a far more exciting experience than something like that. All right. But honestly, everyone, don't be afraid to have a look at one of these bikes. If you're in the market for a motorcycle, I mean, right now is kind of like the perfect time of year to get involved in bikes, to get yourself a new motorcycle. So don't be afraid to look at one of these bikes if you are looking at that kind of super heavyweight kind of level. Why does Triumph is open today? I haven't, I haven't uh, popped in there for ages, that Triumph garage. Yeah, I've got to, got to get back in there again. So hopefully, yeah, I want to be test riding some of the, some of the new bikes, honestly. It's going to be, uh, going to be wicked. I've always wanted a Triumph, so... <laughs> hopefully, one of these days, I'll, I'll be able to buy one. But yeah, let me know what you think down in the comment section below about all this extra displacement. If you ride a Hayabusa, if you ride a ZX-14, ZZR 1400, let me know down in the comment section below and whether or not it's worth it. I think it is personally, as you guys know, I've been riding this bike for a long time now and it's not going anywhere. <laughs> I love this bike so much. I, I paid a lot of money for this bike and it's been worth every penny so far. So thank you ever so much for joining me on today's video. Leave that like as always, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more videos on the awesome Kawasaki ZR1400. And we'll catch you all in the next video everyone. Take care, ride safe.